Hi there. Welcome back to the channel. So what we have here is a old Delta Rockwell. It's a little faded out, but it does say Rockwell. 10 inch Unisaw. I actually found this at an auction and rebuilt it. I don't have a video on rebuilding it. Um, I do have a slideshow of pictures that I will share. It restored nicely. It works like a champ. When I picked this up, this was completely rusted out. Rust remover, polishing, restored the cast iron service. I wound up making my own throat plates as the one that came with it was actually made for a dado stack. It was metal. Um, it was actually quite weak and bowed. I made this out of half inch maple. Got the micro jig, thin kerf, splitter in there. I really like how that works. This is set up for the thinner slaw aid that I have. Um, I went ahead and I put this Delta fence on it. It's a 30 inch and it actually works very impressively. I do have another older saw over here with a 52 inch Shop Fox fence on it. Um, this saw I mostly use with the cross cut sled and I really love this cross cut sled. It is amazing. The repeatability, the precision, the squareness. There is a stop for it right here. And there we go. This is uh, really good. I did not invent this myself. I copied and bought the plans from King's Fine Woodworking. You'll find them on YouTube, they're terrific. They use the William Ng five cut method for squaring, which that in itself was a learning curve for me. But looking at the results, you can go through the five cut method yourself. The squareness I achieved with the five cut method exceeded all the necessary, uh, necessary necessity <laughs> requirements of woodworking. But coming from a tool and die making background and not knowing a whole lot about woodworking, I wanted to start off and get myself the best advantages I could by making something like this. Um, it was a good project. The materials, the T-Track, the, the clamps, um, the saw stop from Craig. You can buy them from different Rockler or whoever. It's all good stuff. Just make sure you get the, the best quality you can afford, and in the long run, it will help you out. And yeah, what other upgrade did I do to this? Um, did the power button here. I really like that. When I'm done with the cut, I just whack it with my knee. I think I need to do something like that over here on the Unisaw. Um, I did want to keep this classic looking. I do like the, the looks of the cabinet. It's a very nice cabinet saw. Heavier than heck. Um, my next project for this Unisaw though, which I want to share in this video, is making a cover for this opening here. Um, I actually want to build one that fits quite snugly and looks good and I can paint to match so I can incorporate the dust collection. One thing I'm a little concerned about and I will do a test here pretty soon, I'm going to run the motor continuously for about five minutes and that's usually the longest I leave it run anyway um, when I'm cutting wood and I will check the temperature now and then later I will come back and do the same thing after I have the cover made and see if I'm causing any uh, stress to the 
motor. <laughs> I don't want to just make a pretty cover and then wind up heating up the motor and making it miserable. So that's what we'll do. And from making the cover, we'll segue into the dust collection for the saw and just try to keep everything as neat and simple as possible. If you have any questions, um, please do ask them. I will read and comment. And I hope you find this useful, entertaining, and um, hey, let's get started. So first let's do a temperature check of the bearings here. That is the bearing housing. And we'll also do one of the motor before firing it up. We have 62 degrees on the motor housing, the bearing frame, 62 degrees. see what do we got here went up to 74 75 degrees on the bearing housing there uh, the motor itself 70 69 degrees um, I showed you what the ambient shop temperature is right now it's hovering around 67 degrees in here um, it is late fall and okay so we'll be checking back with this measurement after we have the cover made, installed, run it for five minutes and check the temperature and see if anything is negatively impacting the motor thermally. All right, let's get going. So just in my notebook here, I did a couple SketchUp iterations critical thing was to know where the motor was located in relationship to the top of the enclosure cover and the bottom. This is just an approximate, not to scale. Um, I was going to go with a 45 degree angle and when I actually set it up and with the protractor on the side of the machine, I discovered it was actually quite close to it. So I'm going to go with a 40 degree angle here rather than a 45. This is kind of to scale. Um, this is the mock-up of where the motor would be. This is one of the two side panels left and right which will give a nice geometry to it. In between the two side panels there will be quarter inch panels here, here, and here and then it will hang on the side of the machine here with a French cleat and this again I'm gonna go by these dimensions lay it out on the sheet of plywood and then cut that. let's see what happens so here's the layout um, just for inf information I drew the 45 here versus the 40 degree angle and you can see that sure I could have made this wider this board and move this away from the saw but I do want to keep it more compact and less bulky looking so I went with the 40 degree angle versus the 45 degree angle just a, a note something I realized too um, when setting this up and you're going for the angle let's get this so the lights better This would be an incorrect setting at 40 degrees here. Coming off of a 90 degree angle, clocking over 40 degrees, in order to make this line, we need to go to the 50 degree mark. This would be the correct method. 
it's an easy mistake to make. Um, it's good to have some reference lines, uh, I call it construction lines, just to make sure you're going to do it correctly as a sanity check. Let's uh, get these cut and make the other pieces and see how this thing looks. Thanks. So just to illustrate why I love this table saw slide, sled, <laughs> it does slide, but it's a sled, um, is another reason of many fixturing things and doing accurate cuts. So I did a light pencil mark here with this combination square protractor attachment set at 40 degrees. I've got the center of the saw blade coming through and cutting my marker line. I'll do that on both sides and it's a safe accurate cut. I have both pieces, the left and right sides together. Let's see how it turns out. useful for illustration purposes. First cut was over here. Now we can flip it. And it's a mirror image of the, the previous cut. Using a drop piece from the first cut, you could simply place that here, square with the fence here, which is precision, and line up the edge of the board here your cut in the line of sight of the saw blade and away you go. So we have our two pieces cut, and these are the side panels, like this, and there's three more pieces we need to add, the top, bottom, and center section. Remember the overall height of this is 19 inches. The width needs to be right at 16 and a half, so it doesn't overhang the, the radius of the cabinet. Remember, it's quite close here, so I do want to capture the edge, but obviously if we come past this radius here, we'll have a gap, and that won't look good. Nailed. Um, I'll come back. Not a whole lot to see there, and just some noise. And I will use 18-gauge um, pins, nails, probably inch and a quarter, and some wood glue to assemble this. The last thing we'll make will be the French cleat catch here where it will hang on the side of the saw cabinet. All right, let's do it. I think this is worth sharing. How to work around this. We have our two pieces coming together here and we obviously want it to look good. If, if it didn't matter, we could just leave it like that, right? Or you know, fill it in with Bondo and buff it out. <laughs> we don't want to do that. So, the proper thing to do is to do the right thing. And good experience for this guy. Now, can you read that? Wake up. Anyway, it's at 50 degrees. I do apologize about the lack of professional lighting here. You can also just set it this way since we need to match this angle. So let's cut some angles on our face boards so they line up nice and look like we're actually trying to be a woodworker. 
Amen. A little bit of extra work, but I think it's going to be worth it. We'll get these cuts made, and we'll have the bevels, and it should look good. More cuts to go. So I got two of the three pieces mocked up here. The third panel is missing. So you can see what's going on here. After doing the 40 degree cuts, it's looking good. This will be against the side of the cabinet over here. Last thing we'll do, we'll make the top of the truncated pyramid. All right. Well, there we go. All five pieces are cut and they're just stacked together here. I'll get them a little bit of glue and some of the 18 gauge pin nails and a little sanding and painting. And it should be ready for its new home on the side of the saw here. Yeah, you like my dust collection going on right now? I got that dust deputy and the hose is just camped out in there when it runs it does help but not exactly ideal all right let's keep moving forward hmm let's see Got my French cleat I'll get that attached with a couple of screws on the side of the steel cabinet here we got the cover assembled right here. Here's the mating French cleat. So this goes against the side of the saw housing here. This is the top. This is the orientation where this will be attached to the side of the saw. This would sit down on it and as it sits the idea of the French cleat is just the weight of this cover will drive this downward with gravity of course and then tight to the saw housing. If I do wind up with a bit of gap I think I will put some foam sticky back insulation here to seal the gap if there is one. So we're almost ready to wrap this up. I did use up some scrap. I wish all of it would have been the scrap birch Probably what I had. It's nice, even though it was half inch. Um, still much better than sanded one side crap plywood we get to buy nowadays. It's got a big wanker in it. But I can fill this, fill these gaps in, sand it. It'll get primed and painted, and it'll look all right. It's gonna, it's gonna look spectacular. Yeah, spectacular. That's what we're going for. Okay, there she blows. It kind of does blow. You see the see the gap down here? Well, I know the cut's straight, and the cleat is holding it parallel, and then it creates a gap there. And it's only on this side. Of course, it wouldn't be on the back side. Dag nabbit. Um, you know what? It's like 7.30 in the evening, and I haven't eaten and eat dinner and the wife says there's something good to eat so I'm gonna think about this tomorrow and maybe I come back with a good idea how to remedy the situation what I don't want to have to do is do a custom profile cut along this edge I do want to avoid that otherwise <clears throat> she needs some paint and some filler and I think it's going to be okay. All right. So here we are. The cover is installed. Has a coat of primer on it and some filler. I like to use that plastic wood fiber fill. And the issue I had yesterday when I hung this on here on the French cleats was the gaposis here. Um, pushing it helps a little bit, but 
Here's what I discovered to be the problem. Just to make sure I'm being honest with the club here. We got full contact on this surface. This is the top and this is the area where the gap was on the saw housing. Upon some investigation with the handy straight edge on the cabinet here, we have a nice contact. And what do we have there? Gaposis. Well, folks, this cabinet is tapered. She's <laughs> done wider at the top than at the bottom. And I will look into it a little bit more. Obviously, the sheet metal, when it was made, was bent and made and Probably over the years it got whacked or something. When I had the top off and I reassembled everything after I repaired and replaced bearings and whatnot, I did not observe anything being too wonky with the sheet metal. I wasn't looking for it either though. So I realized this is out further here than it is at the bottom. And there's a bit of a high spot in the center here. If I put this straight edge here where my big fat thumb is, I have a bit of a gap at the top and a bit of gap at the bottom, meaning this is pushed out here, which is pretty normal when bending sheet metal. You'll see along a bend areas near the center if it's not supported correctly will underform so I don't think I'm going to beat on it with a hammer or there's a small flange behind here you see the flange on the other side over there um, I don't think it's worth it probably do more harm than good I will do my best to seal it because the whole purpose was to test it for that. Let's do one last thing. Let's uh, do the temperature check with the five minutes with the cover on and see, starting with the current ambient temperature in the shop being the same as it was yesterday. Kind of unusual for this time of year, I guess, since we have great temperature swings up to 60 some in the afternoon and down into the 30s in the evening. And I mean Fahrenheit. Very similar conditions as yesterday. 67, I believe it was yesterday. I should go back check the video, but close to what it was. Time to take your temperature. What do we got there? 73 degrees on the bearing housing. And Come on, cooperate. 72 on the motor. All right, I will put the cover on. We'll run her for five minutes and then see if there's much of a temperature increase. Okay, let's check the patient's temperature. First on the bearing housing there. And what do we have? Come on. Goodness. Okay. 87 degrees. This ran a little longer than five minutes. I got sidetracked on the phone. Motor 85 degrees. All right, I am good with that. No significant heat buildup. It's amazing the amount of air actually comes through even the kerf opening here, let alone all the other holes in the cabinet, which I will close up and then introduce the dust collection portal to be continued. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. You have any questions, comments, put them on me. See what I can do to help you out. Do appreciate you taking the time. Have an awesome day. Later.